In this video, we're going to look at how different features within CASA XPS can be used to illustrate the structure of a material such as this polyethylene tetraphthylate. The idea is to be able to associate atoms such as these six carbon atoms in the ring with a pair of peaks and still convey the information that they belong to a ring and yet are potentially from different photoemission binding energies. I'll now illustrate the steps that are used to create this peak model. I've got selected in this raw data file a spectrum that I believe is most representative of the character of PET. That is to say, I believe that there is charge compensation that has adequately compensated for the charge leaving the surface so that we end up with peak shapes that are consistent with the carbon atoms within PET. And this is important because we're going to rely on shapes within the data to fit synthetic components to these data to infer the type of chemistry that we see in PET. The first step when constructing a peak model is to create a background. And the background type that is coming by default is a U3 Tugar background with cross-section parameters that are consistent with a polymer, a general polymer, not this specific polymer, but a cross-section that is meant to be a universal cross-section for polymers. And one of the parameters within this cross-section is this fourth parameter, which is currently set to three. And this is intended to create an offset in the background in its response to the photoemission peaks. The reason for this offset is that an electron, when emitted from an atom, must move through a material to the vacuum before being detected by the instrument. And en route, there is the possibility that these electrons interact with the electron configurations of other atoms. And when this occurs, inelastic scattering where energy is lost can only occur if there are resonant processes by which this scattering event can occur. Hence, for an insulator with a band gap, the opportunity of losing energy close to the photoemission peak is significantly reduced. And it is not until you pass this threshold does the background respond to a photoemission peak. And this is the reason we have an offset in this Tugar cross section. What I'm going to use in this peak model is not a Tugar, but I'm going to use an offset Shirley. The Shirley background shape is commonly used by people in XPS. However, for a polymer, this is probably incorrect for the reasons that I've just given. But the offset Shirley then allows such an offset to be introduced. So if I use the same fourth parameter in the cross-section field and enter a value of four, say, we'll see that this offset in this rise in the background that has been calculated by the Shirley algorithm in response to this peak here will then move to lower kinetic energies. And now we have a background that is potentially more physically meaningful for these data. The exact form for this background curve also depends on this average width parameter. And this determines how the background meets the data. So if I adjust this average width parameter, make this 16 say, then the number of data channels that are used to calculate these limits for this background calculation is now 33. That is 16 inside, 16 outside, and the one point that defines the start and the end. So there are 33 points now averaged to produce this background limit. And one of the features in this version of CAS XPS is a display option so we can see the interval that defines these 33 data channels. And this is useful because if the number of data channels that are requested is not available, then the calculation for the background is simply based on the data channel at these limits of the start and the end. So to ensure that we are making use of the average width we need to see this is the case and these two vertical lines indicate that we have data available for the calculation. We can now start adding components to this peak model. So if I press the create button, 
then the default line shape is entered but I'm not going to use the DS line shape here let's use the LA line shape and I've used a line shape that is a void function with a broad Gaussian so this is assuming that we have a, a tight line shape that is suitable for modeling carbon 1s data I'm going to add more to this Gaussian and I've positioned this peak as if I've got a ring that is consisting of four atoms in one state and two atoms in another state so if I copy this paste and then adjust I've got two peaks now that represent four and two and I can ensure this if I enter a constraint that specifies that I need the area of the peak in column B is half the area of the peak in column A and then I'm going to add another component I did that by pasting I'm holding the control key down and that allows me to move the peak that I've just created and I've moved it to the position where I think this ought to be the carbon bonded to oxygen and then if I do it again and then I have four peaks and I've assigned these peaks in such a way that I presume I've got a ring structure here represented by these two peaks and then one peak for each of the two carbon atoms that are either singly bonded to carbon or doubly bonded to carbon and if I fit these peaks I end up with a peak model that is at least in the first instance a representation of this PET now there are additional counts over here that correspond to what I'm assuming is the satellite peaks, the shake-up peaks that are associated with the ring. So this is a characteristic feature of polymers with a ring and so we could put in some peaks under this envelope here to represent this shake-up structure. When modeling these shake-up peaks then we need to introduce synthetic components but the shape of these components is going to be dependent on the background as well as the shapes that we see in the data so having chosen an offset Shirley approximation for the background this would produce a different shape that we need to model compared to a Tugar background or a linear background so when I introduce component peaks here it's with the understanding that I have to accommodate the signal that is available given an offset Shirley background so I'll now create some peaks to represent these satellite structures. So I'll introduce a peak. I will then assign the same line shape, select this new component and then copy it so that I can then drag this out of the way and paste a new peak that is of the same form. I'll do this twice. So I now have three peaks representing the shakeup structure if I say fit I end up with a peak model that is approximating this structure and it will have an influence on the peak that is next to it which is the peak representing the C double bond O within the PET but as it stands we now have an approximation representing the carbon chemistry and some of the satellite structure that we see in PET. I'll now arrange the data so that we can see these peaks in the context of PET. So I'm going to do this by selecting the number of tiles, inserting the tile from above and then I'm going to change the display so that I see the slideshow that I started with we end up with an arrangement where we can see the data and also the structure of this PET and what I'd like to do is correlate the information I see in this peak model with what I see in this diagram the display of these components can be altered by making adjustments to the component index 
and then using options on the color property page and these options here can be enabled and disabled by mouse interactions and clicks within the components property page on the quantification parameters dialog window so the first adjustment I'll make to the display is to use the mouse and the right mouse button to click on the name field of a component and what this does is it colors all the components with the same component index with the same color and they're all set to minus one and so the color that we see here is a gray color if I change the component indices using the step keyword then each component is assigned a new component index that just increments along this row of components so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 now what I would like to do is return these satellite peaks to minus 1 now these all appear gray as we can see in this portion here then these other components are colored using the component index as the bounding curve to each one of these field components so the first one is set with a value of 0 the second one has a value of 1 and these indices relate to the colors that we see here on the synthetic component custom color palette so we've got green, pink, and brownie color, red. And these are the colors that we're seeing here, corresponding to 0, 1, 2. I've also got, in this position here, another green, which is slightly darker. So the indices go 0, 1, 2, up to 7. And this is index 8. So if I now enter here, index 8, I end up with two components with a, a similar color and one slightly darker than the other. So this shows that we have two different chemical environments for these carbon atoms within the ring. So all the green intensity represents the ring signal. Then we have red representing the carbon that is double bonded to oxygen and single bonded to oxygen. And this is this component here. There are two of these. And then we have another component that represents signal from these C bonded to oxygen this one is also C bonded to oxygen so we have two of these two of these six of these and these should all be in the correct proportions for PET these options on the colors property page allow us to color using the component indices but we can also combine component indices and what this means is that if we assign the same component index for two components in this case I want to indicate that the ring components both have the same color then we end up with a shape that is the sum of both of these two components so this is one interpretation of PET if you look at the Beamson and Briggs polymer database then the fit to PET includes three peaks not four and this is interpreting all of the signal from this ring as contributing to this one structure that is now colored green and in the Beamson and Briggs polymer database the shape that is used to fit these data is asymmetric so the asymmetry in this green peak is due to having two peaks rather than one and these two peaks are both symmetrical